In this video, we're going to investigate how to manipulate wavetables uh, in a few different ways. First thing I want to do is insert my wavetable oscillator. Then I want to turn the velocity up a little bit just to make sure my keyboard's not, not so sensitive. I want to go to the parameters section of my wavetable oscillator. And here we can see as I move the wave index up and down, uh, it goes through the default waveform. I'm going to bring in some of the uh, SQ80 waves that I got online. And I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link down at the bottom for that. Um, here you'll see my SQ80 file. Open that up. And you'll see they're all waves. And then I converted those, which are an AIFF file, into waves. And we're going to work with the base. Uh, and, and you'll see where it says base 1 here. And then the imprint sees it says 1 to 8. Um, and Sonic only used four or five waves to cover the entire keyboard. So that 1-8 dash eight refers to the, uh, the first segment through the eighth segment of eight notes each. So actually the first 64 notes used that wave. And then number 9 used that wave for the next eight waves. And then, of course, 10 through 11 and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll pull that, the first one into the first slot. Now I'm going to increment it up to about the ninth slot. And that's because I only have five waves and I have 16 slots. Or in this case, four waves. So then I'll in increment up to about 13 and I'll pull in another, another wave. And then I'll go all the way up to 16 and pull in the last wave. And you can see here that the factory wave is still in there and all the spots that I didn't put a wave. But we're going to get rid of that by clicking on the fill button here. And that is actually going to fill in all the spaces from the waves that I input so that they morph smoothly together. So now all the factory ones are gone. So since the Insonic was set up, so that the first wave did the first eight segments of eight notes each on the keyboard. In other words, all the low notes. Um, we're going to let Fathom, uh, or we're going to tell Fathom to do that for us also. So we're going to modulate that wave index. We're going to select the, the keyboard tracking. And we're going to tell it which wave index gets used for which key. So I'm going to increase this up a little bit so I have some more segments to work with. Since the, the first wave is covering actually 64 notes, uh, that segment's pretty large. And since it's, since it's segment one, I'll pull it all the way down. And the last one the last note, or the last wave that we brought in was pretty small. Or when I say small, it didn't take up the same amount of range. It only took up, uh, I believe, what, 12 through 15, so 16 notes versus 64. I hope I'm making sense with that. Basically, we're taking these four waves and spreading them out across the keyboard uh, because each wave has a different, a little different timbre, just as a, a piano string on the low notes is big and it's wound and it vibrates a lot, whereas the, the strings in the upper registers are small strings and they are very tinny sound and very bright sounding. It's a completely different timbre altogether, which is what Insonic was doing with these waves. Right now, I'm making this process more complicated than it needs to be. Really, it just needs to be kind of linear. I'm just moving around dots. 
I'm going to bring that in so that a, a good portion of the lower register still uses that first note or that first wave before it starts morphing through into index number three, four, and five, and so forth. Now I'm going to increase the the amount to 100%. That way it goes from 1 all the way up to 16. I'll give you an example of what that sounds like. As it goes up the keyboard, it's, it's using different waves at different places. So that's one way you can can use a wavetable to uh, get certain sounds that you could not necessarily do with just a static wave. So we're going to close out of this, and we'll delete this oscillator, and we'll start over and do it, do another one in a different way. So we want to reinsert that wavetable oscillator. Go back to parameters so we can see our wave index again, which has our factory wave, our factory wavetable. And this time we're going to modulate the wavetable with an envelope with the idea to be able or to take it from the 16th index to the first index uh, fairly quickly. That's not going to have any effect until I turn it up. There we go. Now we can see I've got 100%, so it should take me through 16 all the way down to 1, since my envelope starts at the top. And you can hear it has that percussive sound, kind of like we had in the FM. And we can increase the period to make that a little bit longer. combination with these dials you can set it to to go through any number of any number of degrees whether it be from 5 to 3 or you know 11 to 2 or any way you want depending on the waves you have and how far you want to travel through that you can also use the envelope to do the same you can lift up the bottom taking it to wave number 2 or 5 or 8 You can hear it's morphing less, or it's you know it's traveling through the wavetable less. Okay, so there's that one. We'll get rid of it. And we'll do another one. Using the same uh, same factory wave or wave table. This time we're going to modulate the index with an LFO so that it scans back and forth through the waves. <laughs> Increase the period so that it's not so wobbly. Set that to bipolar so that it goes both positive and negative. 
bring the dial to the center so then we can control the range with the the strength of the modulator at this point it's going back and forth between say six and probably nine and you can set that exact if you needed to right now just for example you can make it tighter or bigger you can take it down to waves one and two bring it up to two through eight just kind of see how it sounds right now it sounds like I'm getting a haircut at this point we want to get our second wavetable involved. This also has the factory wavetable in it. And we're going to set our algorithm to add. What it's going to do is it's going to add wavetable number two to wavetable number one. And you can see this as we increase the amount that that square little hat kind of starts coming in there on that middle wave. So it's actually adding the wavetable 2 to the wavetable 1. We can decrease the pulse width of it to see it a little more clearly. What's going on there? I'll go back up and increase the original modulation a little bit. And now we'll select the, the phase of wavetable number two and modulate it. And it's going to take that pulse and move it back and forth through the wave that's being created through wavetable one. So it's basically doing what we were doing before, just by moving it manually. Now it's doing it automatically. We'll set it to bipolar so it goes positive and negative. So at this point we have wavetable one oscillating with an LFO through a few waves of its own, and then we have the pulse modulating through creating a unique wave here in the middle. Now we're going to take the wave index of wavetable 2 and modulate it also. So at this point we'll be modulating wavetable 1, wavetable 2, and wavetable 2 will be added to wavetable 1 to create actually what we hear. make that a little bit longer so at this point we have a whole lot of modulations going on just kind of morphing our, our wave around which gives it depth gives it a variance it's not so static and and this is what makes wavetable synthesis so uh, so cool in my opinion especially for pads, because they can just really wander all over the place. Let me put some detune on it, thicken it up a little bit. See, now you have a really nice, big, thick sound that has a lot of movement, a lot of depth. And the possibilities are, are endless. So that's a little bit more with uh, some wavetables. Hopefully that uh, shed some light on some things and provided some ins inspiration to, uh, to move forward.